Hello, Wandering Beekeeper here. Welcome to Life on a Purple Planet. This is Bernardus C. The biology here is interesting. It's, uh, the, there is no green chlorophyll. It's all full. There's trees. There's chickens, pigs, cows, and sheep here already. We've landed, uh, and built a bit of a homestead. Let's just walk through it. Welcome to the little house on the purple prairie. Not a lot in it. Cryo chamber because you can't sleep in a bed here. It won't explode. You can't sleep in it. Right clicking it does nothing. You have to have the cryo chamber. They're still off world. And just an ME chest to be able to check on what's on a chip. And a seat for in the evening, heading down and staring out across the field and just relaxing. A couple of pressers. Pardon me, dropping an item there. The ground traps don't work. Um, there are animals here, but the ground traps do not work here. The hives do work. Let's get them set. This is just a test field here with uh, some of the base crops, corn, uh, wheat, soybeans, corn, coffee, and tea. The big crop field is here, and let's just have a quick look at it. Because this has all the Harvest Craft crops growing, every single one of them. All the field crops growing here. We have them all. We have all the standard crops as well pumpkins, melons, carrots, potatoes, beetroot. And we have an orchard. We have an extensive orchard. The harvest craft trees grow here, but of course they grow with local foliage, so everything turns purple. The only green is going to be the occasional fruit. And the terrestrial crops that we have brought in. Which we are processing here. This is the food. This is the processing building, which is the center point of this farm. Oh bother! Right, right click. I'll have to fix that. So, food processing. Once again, we are dependent upon ME technology more heavily so here. And previously, we have 16 interfaces, and all of them are nearly full. We were able to auto-craft a very large amount of stuff, a very wide amount, a variety of stuff. All the different burgers, the Mexican food, the, some of the Italian desserts, beverages... Barnard Star is exporting food to the rest of humanity. Single, one key chip at a time. Because you can pile so much food onto a one key chip. I've been here long enough that the vines are growing on the building. Up here we have the power systems. These are advanced solar systems. And then we have storage clusters so that they accumulate during the day. And then over here I have a fuel, a fuel generator that is getting its fuel through an export bus. The fuel is stored digitally in the ME system. We'll see that in a minute. 
Industrial processing allows me to drop a chip into this drive from a quarry and have everything automatically processed. Right now, the tin ore is being converted into ingots in this electric arc furnace here. We have import and export buses set up. The auto workbench create, blocks the redstone so that it, we have a uh, redstone block. It's slowly working its way through this. The raw silicon is all being printed into silicon circuits over here in this inscriber. We can see it working. Well, the few machines we can actually see working. The compressor here is off right now. I can use it to make compressed metals, set it up correctly, and I can make compressed bronze out of the ores that are in here just by dropping the chip in. That cable is broken to keep, uh, to shut off these two inscribers. One makes printed logic circuits from gold, the other makes engineering circuits, diamonds. I want to keep the gold and diamonds out of this batch, rather a lot. This is a 60 by 60 quarry, and we'll see what that means in a few minutes. But effectively, I've quarried out a 60 block by 60 block area all the way down to bedrock. Discarded the cobblestone and kept everything else. Loaded it into chip. I bring it in here, drop it into the processing room, and it starts converting it. And then I just have to come back later, and I have ingots where I had ore, and so on and so forth. All set up with auto crafting, so we can export technology. We can also export fuel. We have 7,483 buckets of oil right now that we are converting into fuel. We have over 3,000 buckets of fuel. Arnard Star is capable of energy independence, but at different levels. There is, we're dealing with solar, and we're dealing with fuel. Temperature has dropped. It gets down below freezing at night here. Sky is rather spectacular, though, with the orange dwarf sun having set. The big moon, the inner one having risen. The outer purple moon is around here somewhere. We'll see it later, I'm sure. The farm here is a fairly extensive bit of work to put in food processing, industrial processing, fuel processing, orchard with all the harvest craft trees, growing all the harvest craft crops. But the real reason we're here. Let's just open it up here. Oh yes, and we can do all sorts of interesting things with the purple, purple wood. Not not as much as I'd like to, but you know, that's life. Let us go see the re a bit more of this planet. It, the terrain is interesting. It's it lay it lays out differently than other worlds. We are here at the ed once again at the edge of a swamp. There are other swamps. This one's still with an oil deposit in it that I haven't pumped out. The mountains go up very high. And then there are deserts beyond them. Another assorted land and 
And then there are the dig sites. This is where all the materials have been coming from. That big gray area you saw, that's bedrock. I've used quarries. Here. This is a very rich area. You can see all the ore in the sides of the walls. Very rich area. There's redstone and gold and iron. There is no yellorium and there is no certus quartz. Reactors and ME technology are difficult. It all has to be imported all the way from Terra. This is why we're using so much solar, so much, and why we've got a essentially gasoline-powered backup, a fuel-powered backup, because we can't get reactor fuel here. We have to import the service quartz to make the ME technology. So it's not distributed. We don't have cables running everywhere because we can't. It's a different sort of life here on the purple planet. But it's a good life. Food grows, it's plenty of resources within certain ranges, and at night, sit here and watch the sun go down across the orchard and the field, and listen and watch the chickens run around. Yeah, I could live here. I could, I could easily live here. I've spent a lot of time on this planet virtually. I think I could be here more often. Just running the farm. And this brings us to the end of the expansion. We have come all the way from Terra through space stations and moons and asteroid belts to end up once again on a farm watching the clouds go by, watching the chickens. It's a comfortable environment. So I'm the wandering beekeeper and I will be living here on the purple planet for the expansion series. We are skipping Proxima Centauri. I did promise to say something about that last minute note. We're skipping Proxima Centauri because the average daily temperature there is 125 degrees Fahrenheit. There is no oxy in the atmosphere. It's orbiting a trinary star system, and the planet apparently got cooked off. There used to be a biosphere there. There's a lot of burnt trees now, and it's there's the atmosphere is full of smoke and there's not much in the way of resources. It just isn't. Toss City F is there as a challenge. It is a water planet. It is cold. It's obviously brine because the average temperature of the water is below zero Celsius. There is no oxy in the atmosphere. It is possible to build land up above the water to build a platform up above the water, but there's no oxy up there. I'd have to put in electrolyzers and dome over the area and then pump it full of oxy before I could grow the first tree. And Tall City F has no ore. None at all. Like Neptune's moon Triton, it is a it is dry. There is nothing there to mine. Here, well, let's go see because I have a chest here, and there are four chips in it. 
Two of them are from other worlds. They're test cores. But two of them are from that quarry we saw. And let's just go pop these into the chest and see what's on them. Whoops. The boots that I'm wearing have a special feature that allows me to maneuver better in zero gravity. It occasionally glitches and has me climb a building on planet side. So this is partially processed. All the ore has been processed into ingots. Going through the electric arc furnace doubles the count in the process. So we end up with 1,500 iron ingots where we had some 750 previously. Printed silicon. Let us flip to the other chip because this is the fully processed one. 1,022 logic circuits, 242 engineering circuits, 823 silicon, printed silicon. Feed that all through an ME system into an inscriber, and you will have logic processors and engineering processors sp spraying out. Calculation processors are another problem. There's no certus. We can produce compressed bronze, we can do compressed steel, we can do printed circuits. We can't do calculation processors, which means we cannot build the storage devices that we're currently casually tossing on the floor. So until we come up with a way to mod the mods, and cause the various ores to spawn in more places. This is the end of the series, and we will just quietly sit here and watch Barnard's star, this, this orange dwarf star, slowly dropping. It's, you know, it got hot today. It gets up to the low 30s here. That's mid-80s Fahrenheit during the day, just below freezing at night. It's doable. It's, a, it's wide, but it's doable. It's a lot of thermal stress, but the plants don't seem to mind. The local plants thrive. The corn grows. Good, and I've been rambling for far too long. Thank you for joining me on this journey. I am the Wandering Beekeeper. Go well.